When we think about infectious diseases that have ravaged the globe, we usually think of examples like tuberculosis, malaria, and AIDS. But what if I told you that in 2015, 257 million people were living with a chronic form of this condition and almost 900,000 people died from it? You'd probably want to know what it is, right? Well, this condition is the most common liver disease in the world, and it's called Hepatitis B. Welcome to Hepatitis B Explained. Before we get into the specifics, let's go over some background knowledge. Hepatitis B is a life-threatening liver infection caused by the Hepatitis B virus, or HBV. It can cause chronic infection and put people at a high risk of death from cirrhosis, or scarring of the liver, and liver cancer. Today, Hepatitis B has the highest prevalence in the Western Pacific and African regions, at around 6% for both areas. Due to a massive uptick in vaccination, Hepatitis B isn't seen frequently in North America. In terms of transmission, Hepatitis B is primarily spread from mother to child at birth, sexual transmission, or misuse of contaminated needles. It can be transmitted by the exchange of infected bodily fluids such as blood, saliva, menstrual and vaginal fluid, and seminal fluid. Most people do not experience any symptoms when newly infected. However, some people experience acute illness with symptoms that last several weeks, including yellowing of the skin and eyes, also known as jaundice, dark urine, extreme fatigue, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. A small subset of individuals with acute hepatitis B can also develop acute liver failure, which can lead to death. In some people, the hepatitis B virus can cause a chronic liver failure that can later develop into cirrhosis, also known as scarring of the liver, or liver cancer. This form of chronic hepatitis B is known to have much worse outcomes than the aforementioned acute hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is caused by the hepatitis B virus, or HBV. A virus is an organism that invades a host cell and uses the host cell's metabolic processes to produce a new generation of viral particles. The HBV virus has a casing or capsid and a DNA component housed inside. The HBV binds to a receptor on the surface of a liver cell, also known as a hepatocyte. A receptor is like a dock that perfectly binds to the HBV. Once the docking is complete, the HBV is brought into the cell. Once inside the cell, the capsid or casing is disassembled and the DNA inside is transported to the cell's nucleus, also known as the command center of the cell. The HBV uses the hepatocyte's machinery to make copies of itself using its own DNA. Once all of the required proteins and DNA are assembled for a new virus, the HBV exits the hepatocyte to infect a new host hepatocyte. During the invasion and proliferation of HBV and hepatocytes, your body's immune system smells trouble and starts attacking and destroying the cells that it thinks are infected hepatocytes. This is mainly the result of a cell-mediated adaptive immune response. It is called cell-mediated since it uses immune cells like cytotoxic T cells or CTLs, which act as assassins in targeting and killing cells that contain the hepatitis B virus. T cells are activated when the T cell receptor and a co-stimulatory molecule recognize an antigen on a complex called major histocompatibility complex, or MHC. MHCs are on the surface of antigen-presenting cells, or APCs. These cells recognize the virus as dangerous and grind it up to prepare an antigen that the T cells can recognize. Afterwards, the T cell differentiates into T helper cells, which are responsible for producing cytokines that act as signals for the development of CTLs. CTLs produce toxic proteins that are like poison for the target cells. These toxic proteins can punch a hole in infected cells and make all of its contents spill out, effectively killing the cell. When liver cells die in this fashion, it leads to liver damage and the aforementioned symptoms seen in hepatitis B. To be more specific, CD8 T cells are a major component of the cell-mediated adaptive immune response. They normally mediate protection against pathogens and tumor cells. In order to be properly activated, CD8 T cells require two signals. First, the recognition of an antigen presented by MHC C1 complexes on APCs, which is mediated by the interaction of the antigen-specific T-cell receptor with the MHC1 complexes, and second, co-stimulatory signals provided by the same APC. Hepatitis B virus-specific CD8 T-cells play a major role in controlling and resolving HBV infection. Strong HBV-specific CD8 responses have been shown to correlate with viral clearance. In acute infection, which can last up to six months, HBV-specific CD8 T-cells are able to abolish viral replication in the liver while killing only a small fraction of hepatocytes. This is mediated by the secretion of inflammatory cytokines such as IFN gamma and TNF by the CD8 T cells. However, in chronically HBV infected individuals, virus-specific CD8 T cell responses are rarely detectable. This is due to their functional impairment attributed to reduced expression of co-stimulatory molecules, reduced ability to proliferate, and impaired cytokine secretion. This, in essence, prevents the clearance of HBV infection and results in the aforementioned more serious chronic symptoms. Highly viremic HBV infected patients show a more severely impaired CD8 T cell phenotype and thus 
the CD8 T cell response is crucial to clearance of the hepatitis B virus. In chronic hepatitis B, several mechanisms contribute to the dysfunction of HBV-specific T cells, as seen in this figure from Yeh et al. The result is exhausted T cells which are characterized by dysfunctional proliferation, impaired cytokine production, and increased apoptosis, or cell death. As viral load increases, these dysfunctional cells increasingly express inhibitory factors such as PD-1, CTLA-4, and TIM-3, which exacerbate their unresponsiveness and eventually lead to a shortage of CTLs that are able to attack the HBV. Ultimately, in severe stages of T-cell exhaustion, virus-specific T-cells become completely deleted. Thus, the virus is not cleared, contributing to the chronic nature of this disease. In terms of prevention, a safe and effective vaccine that offers a 98-100% to protection against hepatitis B is available. The World Health Organization recommends that all infants receive the hepatitis B vaccine within 24 hours after birth. Timely birth dose is an effective measure to reduce transmission from mother to child. However, it's important to know that this is just a preventative measure. As of today, there is no specific cure for acute hepatitis B. Therefore, care is aimed at maintaining comfort and adequate nutrition balance, including the replacement of fluids lost from vomiting and diarrhea. Chronic hepatitis B infection can be treated with medicines including oral antiviral agents. Treatment can slow the progression of cirrhosis, reduce incidence of liver cancer, and improve long-term survival. In conclusion, hepatitis B is a potentially life-threatening liver infection and is caused by the hepatitis B virus. It can manifest in acute or chronic infection and put people at high risk of death from cirrhosis and liver cancer. It is always a good idea to talk to your healthcare provider or seek medical attention if you don't feel well or if you are uncertain about whether you have been infected with hepatitis B. Ensuring that you and your family are vaccinated will go a long way in protecting you against hepatitis B, making the world a little safer for all of us.